Hello, amazing artists. Welcome back. You know, I'm starting to get a little bored and tired of this whole staying at home thing, and I just can't think of a solution of something that would make me feel better. You know what? You know what would make this better? Magic. That's right. All this so week, we're I'm start going to be posting off some Harry Potter inspired art videos. School of Witchcraft so and Wizardry. Crest. You guys are into so Harry Potter, or you're at least into something that the idea of magical a family, wizards. Or and if you school. are, so in this then case, it represents you'll Hogwarts. enjoy my videos this week. Go to in the wizarding world. So this crest has four different parts representing the four different founders of Hogwarts. And it also represents the four different houses in Hogwarts. Whenever you get accepted to Hogwarts, you go through a ceremony with a sorting hat and it takes into account what your personality is and decides for you what house in Hogwarts is best for you. So while I'm drawing this and coloring this, I'm going to be explaining a little bit about each of these four houses and maybe that will help you decide which Hogwarts house you belong to in the magical world. Ready? So to get started, I need a piece of paper and a pencil. I want some straight lines across each side of my paper. So to make that easier on me, I am folding my paper in half each way. So it doesn't matter which way you start with. So fold it in half, open it up, and then you're going to fold it in half the other way. So whenever you open this up, it should give you four equal little sections in your paper. So you're just opening it up. There you go. And you've got a paper that's split into fourths. So we're going to end up tracing over those folded lines in a little bit. But first, we are going to draw the outer shape of our crest. So we need a curved line going across the top. So curve up towards the middle, and once you hit the middle, you curve downward. So it's just a curved line across the top of your paper. Don't leave hardly any room at the very, very top of your paper. You want to take up as much room as possible. Now I am drawing a line down the left side of my paper and curving that line towards the bottom middle of my paper. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going downward and then curving towards the bottom middle. There we go. So it's, it should look like a shield. Um, and you want each side to look pretty even, so that's why I just erased and tried to make it a little bit more even to the other side. Now I am tracing across those folded lines that I made for myself. And if you want those lines to be perfect, you could use a ruler or something with a straight edge. But I don't mind my lines being a little bit imperfect but you should have what looks like a shield that is split into four different sections. Now in the middle of my crest, I'm going to draw a rectangular shape. So this is the very center and I want it to take up the same amount of space in each section and then I'm erasing all the lines inside. So this is a rectangular shape. And on the inside here, I'm drawing the letter H for Hogwarts. And I'm going to turn it into a block letter by 
going all the way around the H. And if you already know how to do a block letter or a bubble letter without writing the letter first, then way to go. But this is how our crest should look before we start drawing all the animals inside. So I'm going to zoom in here so that we are focused on the upper left section of our shield. And that section is going to represent Gryffindor. So in this section, we will be drawing a lion because Gryffindors are represented by a lion and the colors red and gold. So this isn't going to be a super realistic line. It's going to be kind of cute and cartoony. I'm going to start with his ears. So towards the top of that section, I'm going to do these two curved shapes like this, and they should be fairly even with each other. And then here's the inner part of the ear. So that's just more curves inside. And then instead of just connecting these, I'm going to draw these little zigzag lines for um, hair that's going in front of his face. And then underneath that hair, I'm drawing two circles for eyes and then a big wide triangle for his nose and lines coming up from each side of his nose. So that shows that he's got sort of a snout. And then at the bottom of your nose, just two big wide curves going up. And then his chin goes underneath that. That's the bottom part of his mouth. Now I am drawing the sides of his face, just these two curves lines. If I'm going too fast, please just press pause. And then I am giving him a mane. So just a bunch of zigzag lines going all around his face. And at the top of the crest, I'm actually, since I have room, I'm having his hair go over the crest at the top. But on the other parts, the other sides of the section of the crest, I'm going to keep it inside. So I am erasing the top of the crest that is inside of his hair. There we go. So his hair is pretty wild, which I like. Now I am just giving him little pupils inside of his eyes and a couple of whiskers. So there's our lion. Now it's time to move on to Slytherin. So Slytherin is represented with a snake in the colors green and silver. So I'm starting with this circular shape, just drawing really lightly to show myself where I want the snake's head to be, where his face will be. And then on the outer side of that circle, I'm drawing this sort of like a S shape, just curving down. And then um, from about halfway, I'm drawing a curve going outward. So the image in my head that I'm trying to draw right now is sort of like a, a snake that is wrapped up around the bottom, but then his head is poking upward. So it's sort of like it almost looks like a cinnamon roll at the bottom and then with these curved lines coming upward now i am drawing his where his face will be i'm not going to make that a complete circle i just want to give him like a little chin and then i can erase that first circle that i made i'm drawing a mouth which is just like a a very wide and curvy W and then his split tongue coming out. Two little slits for his nose and then 
the same sort of eyes that I put on the lion and the right eye is cut off a little bit so it's sort of like it looks like it's on the other side of his face and I think I want to add these cute little circles just to to make these drawings a little bit more playful um, I want each animal to look even in some way so these circles for their cheeks will give them a commonality. Now moving on to Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff's animal is a badger and their colors are yellow and black. I want to start with the badger's ears. So they're going to be these um, pointy ears. They're, they're short and pointy and I'm going to do that on both sides but for this right side, it'll, it'll run into the H, so I'm not gonna finish it. And then I'm just doing a zigzag like I did with the lion, but I'm making it going upward. So he's got some hairs going upward at the top of his head. So I'm going to come down towards the bottom of this section and start to draw a shape for his nose. It's going to be sort of, um, almost like a triangle, but with rounded corners. And badgers have these really long faces. So I'm just representing that with this, with these two diagonal lines. And those are also a white stripe down the front of his face. And then on each side of that white stripe, I've got the same sort of eyes as the other animals. I'm going to have him just looking towards the, the bottom left side of my paper, giving a curve uh, underneath his nose, and then I'm doing zigzags again for hair that's poking out on each side of his face, and those will connect to that curve and I'm giving him a, a little curved mouth and then those same circle cheeks. So badgers are, are very interesting looking animals um, but they are very easy to, to turn into a cute little cartoon. Now I've got all this extra space so I'm going to give him a short little arm with these four pointy fingers and then have this curve represent his back. So it kind of looks like he's, he's holding on to the side of the crest. And I'm making him furry with these little texture lines. And last but certainly not least is Ravenclaw. Ravenclaws are represented with an eagle and their colors are blue and bronze. On the right side, I am starting with a, a beak. So this sort of looks like a sideways teardrop that comes to a point. And I'm doing another curved line underneath. So it's the top of his beak, and then you can see a little bit of the bottom. Now I'm giving him some little hairs at the top of his head, curved lines on each side of his head, and then at the bottom of his head, this zigzag line again, just to represent like where his head meets his body. And then a, a curved line for part of his body. And then the same sort of eyes and cheeks as my other animals. And then just some curved lines to represent feathers. I'm finished drawing, now I'm moving on to coloring. I'm going to be using crayons, but you can use anything that you've got available to you at home. While I'm coloring these, I'll be explaining a little bit more about each house. So hopefully that's something that interests some of you. And I have a feeling some of you already know some of the things I'm about to explain to you. So I already, told you that Gryffindor's colors are red and gold. Really, it's scarlet and gold. I'm 
picking a red crayon just for these background parts of this section of my crest. So I'm coloring in the background of my lion red. Now to be sorted into Gryffindor, you have to value courage and bravery and you're usually principled. You want to do the right thing. You want to help others. You want justice, that sort of thing. So it is probably the most popular house um, just because whenever you are reading a story, you usually want to root for the protagonist. And in Harry Potter, that happens to be a Gryffindor. So if you find that you are adventurous and you are brave and you try to do the right thing whenever you can, then you are probably a Gryffindor. So when I am coloring my lion in, I'm thinking I want his hair to probably be brown and his face to be either yellow or orange. I might even find a yellowish orange color for that. So whenever I color with crayons, and I, I think I've mentioned this before, I like to go around the edges of my drawing first to create these sort of boundaries to help me not go outside of the lines. And that way, once I get to coloring the inside of my boundaries, I can choose one direction and color in that same direction the whole time. And that makes my coloring look a bit more neat, which is really important to me. Before I color in the rest of his mane, I'm going to draw these very dark, short lines. So I'm pushing down a little bit harder with my crayon just to give his hair a bit of texture. And then when I'm finished with that, I will color in the whole thing really lightly so that I could still see those dark lines. Now I am going to trace all of my lines with a black crayon so that I can see all the details a little bit better and make them pop.
Now moving on to Slytherin. I think I want to color the snake a dark green and the background a light green because when anyone thinks of Slytherin green pops into their head so I really want to emphasize that in this section. Now to determine if you are Slytherin, Slytherins tend to value ambition and leadership. So if you really like being in charge and you are determined to do things your own way and you're determined maybe to go far with your um, dreams and you're willing to do anything to accomplish them, you might be a Slytherin. They also tend to care more about themselves and like their immediate family than other people so much. So a lot of the kids that get sorted into Slytherin tend to be what's called pure blood wizards. So their parents were wizards, their grandparents were wizards. There aren't any non-wizards or muggles in their family. So it's very uncommon for someone to be a Slytherin and have a muggle in their family. But if you are someone who, you know, gets things done and um, you're determined and you like being in charge, then you might be a Slytherin. Unfortunately, people tend to think of Slytherins as evil just because a lot of evil wizards have come out of Slytherin, but that's very untrue about all Slytherins being evil. There are plenty of cool kids, normal kids in Slytherin. Now moving on to Hufflepuff. Um, their colors, as I said, are yellow and black and a badger is sort of like a grayish black and white color. So since um, my animal will, sh will represent the black, I'm making the background yellow. Now to find out if you are a Hufflepuff. Hufflepuffs are, I would say the nicest kids on campus. So they are, um, they really value friendship and kindness. They're very caring and they're more patient and laid back. Um, they value like peace and loyalty and tolerance. So they're these just gen genuinely good people. So, for example, Newt Scamander in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is a Hufflepuff. And Cedric Diggory, of course, is a Hufflepuff as well. So, if you value loyalty and fairness and kindness and those are more important to you than the values in the other houses, then you are probably a Hufflepuff.
Now for our last section of our crest, we've got Ravenclaw. I'm going to be coloring the background blue. And usually eagles on the Hogwarts crest are just solid brown or bronze, but I'm going to make him more like a bald eagle where his head will be white and his feathers will be brown. So Ravenclaws, if you value learning and being um, unique and true to yourself and um, creative, then you might be a Ravenclaw. So Ravenclaws tend to be a, a bit strange because they are able to think outside of the box. They're able to come up with new ideas and um, sometimes that can seem a bit weird to the other houses. So characters such as Luna Lovegood, who in my opinion is the best character but she is kind of strange right but she is always able to think um, in a different way than her friends and come up with these really creative ideas and she also is really into expressing herself in a creative way so she's a great example of a Ravenclaw so if um, intelligence and learning and individuality and creativity are your top values, then you are probably a Ravenclaw. Now for the center of your crest, you can kind of just color that however you want. I am going to make mine black on the outside and white on the inside, just so it clashes with the rest of the colors and makes those other colors really stand out. I think that'll look nice. So I would love to see your Hogwarts crests and I would love to know what house you think that you should be sorted into. I think that I would be a Ravenclaw. So, um, as always, please take a picture, show me your artwork, and stay tuned this week for more Harry Potter magic.